नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टेलीविजन आई एम विशाल दहिया एंड यूर वॉचिंग आर शो परस्पेक्टिव वेर वी ब्रिंग यू डिटेल्ड एनालिसिस ऑफ की नेशनल एंड इंटरनेशनल इश्यूज टुडे वी गोन टॉक अबाउट द स्टेट ऑफ टेक्निकल एजुकेशन इन इंडिया and the recommendations therein by a committee now the ministry of education informed lok sabha on monday that the committee headed by iit hyderabad chairman bbr mohan reddy has recommended that the moratorium on setting up of new engineering colleges in the country should continue barring a few exceptions now, the reddy committee was set up in 2018 to prepare short term medium term perspective plans for engineering education in its first report in 2019 the committee had observed that capacity utilization during 2017-18 in undergraduate and postgraduate level was 49.8% and recommended that no new capacity be approved by AICTE starting from the academic year 2020 Now, the data shared by the education ministry shows that both approved intake and total enrollment in engineering courses have declined over the years from a decadal high of 31,82,285 approved intake in 2014 the number dipped to 23,66,728 in 2021-22 total enrollments came down to 12,75,880 in 2020-21 from a high of 17,84,127 in 2013-14. So what are the key issues related to management of technical education and how are those being tackled? We'll today discuss and analyze all these aspects. And for more on this, we're joined by a distinguished panel of experts today. Let me first introduce them to you. Beginning with, we have with us in the studio, Professor K.K. Agarwal, Chairperson of the National Board of uh, Accreditation. Uh, we're also joined by three more uh, Uh, experts dr b v r mohan reddy is joining us a uh, chairman of the board of governors of iit hyderabad and uh, uh, the head of the committee which has submitted uh, this particular report uh, professor rana singh is also joining us uh, he is the ceo of triple ie at uh, sanskriti university mathura and professor navin sheth uh, is uh, joining us vice chancellor of uh, gujarat technological university that is uh, gtu welcome all of you gentlemen uh, to uh, sansa tv let me begin with you dr reddy and let's first start by understanding uh, the uh, the recommendations of of uh, you know your committee as well as the basis of those recommendations one of course as i was pointing out in the introduction is pretty much clear that the moratorium stays for a few more years there uh, there are two reports we need to refer to in sense that uh, the committee that was originally constituted was in uh, the year 2018 and uh, i was chairing the committee i submitted the final report uh, early part of 2019 it was january i believe and then uh, again the committee was reconstituted in uh, october of this year 2021 mm-hmm. and uh, i just submitted the it is a different um, a group of members all right but we submitted an interim report uh, in the early part of december 5th or 6th of this month now going back to the original report if you look at it the headline news was we should declare a moratorium on uh, giving any more capacity for engineering education in india what are the key driver for it was the very poor capacity utilization that went in okay to me uh, the planning was horrendously went wrong in the sense that at one point of time uh, there were as many as about 24 lakh seats or so in uh, the undergraduate postgraduate and uh, diploma engineering in the country but let me take uh, the base year as uh, 2018 19 and look at the numbers at that point of time they were uh, given the market dynamics that happened there were 14 lakhs of seats that were available in 2018 19 mm-hmm. but that year the enrollment that is people who have registered themselves for undergraduate program let's be very specific to undergraduate for a while because that's the bulk of uh, the technical education in this country was uh, no more than about 7.21 lakhs which in effect says that the enrollment percentage was just 51% okay by 1 50% which means half the capacity was not utilized at all mm-hmm. uh but if you look at it from a different perspective the capacity was created there was infrastructure there were buildings there were uh, teachers what what the quality of teachers will come in a minute but we also had the lab equipment and so on and so forth so we thought at that point of time under utilization of this capacity was creating enormous amount of challenges because there are number of instances where these institutions though they are privately owned but actually use public funding and so they came they took loans to the banks and so on and so forth so the best thing we thought was let's give a pause at this point of time to say we don't create any more capacity that was the key driver for us at that point of time mm-hmm. 
The second one is that we, we, uh, everybody talks about shortage of the uh, teachers. That's the faculty. But more importantly, an indicator uh, of the quality of people who are being churned out from these academic institutions made us believe it is not just the quantity of teachers, but the okay. quality of teachers was also questionable. Okay. So we said we need to have an intervention in terms of the quality of teachers. Okay. We need to definitely upgrade them. We need to reskill them. The third thing that also came up at that point of time was that if you look at even this 7 lakh graduates who have enrolled, and approximately say under 7 lakhs of them were also graduating at the undergraduate level, at no point of time, we are in a position to place more than three and a half lakhs to 3.7 lakhs mm -hmm. of these undergraduate students into industry. So the industry you linkage. Say, this is the placement record that we have because we don't keep track of students after they graduate. Maybe you give me under 10%, 20% on top of it. So which in effect says that at no point of time, we were in a position to place more than 4.5 lakhs. We graduate 7 lakhs, 4.5 lakhs were placed totally. Okay. 2.5 lakhs people were not placed at all. It's not necessarily that no jobs were there. There's a, certainly a certain amount of pressure in terms of uh, the right skilled people. So therefore, the quality of engineering that has to be checked out. Okay. The second one is, are we graduating in faculties or disciplines which are in demand at this in point? In demand, of time? yes. So the, the challenge is that, you know, we were still going ahead with uh, the traditional disciplines like mechanical, electrical, civil, uh, chemical engineering. Okay. We were, uh, and we brought in computer science to a certain extent, but not new, newer di digital technologies. So one of the biggest um, uh, 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 challenges was that we had very little capacity for emerging technologies. Mm -hmm. And that was a strong recommendation we made. Okay. We called out eight new emerging technologies and we say we need to create capacity for that. Okay, Do Dr. Reddy, I'd like to, you know, take these four or five points to uh, the three panelists before we, uh, you know, go further on. Uh, sure. uh, and, and, and I'm pretty sure uh, you, you would have uh, the views on how to tackle these issues as well. But let me bring in, uh, you know, all three of them. Professor Agarwal, let me start with you. You know, all these aspects which Dr. Reddy is pointing out, which his committee has... Uh, looked upon. And, and the major issue is, of course, uh, the underutilization of capacity in yes. terms of the seats which are available. But it's not just limited to that. There are related aspects as well, with, with the industry linkage, or if you're looking at uh, uh, the last point which Dr. Reddy made uh, in, in terms of, you know, uh, the new courses or uh, uh, keeping pace with the changing technology there. Yeah. Uh, Vishal, underutilization is uh, one part of the story. Actually, the problem is not as on date. Problem is maybe 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when we had unprecedented expansion mm -hmm. without any checks and balances. I mean, that problem is reflected today in a negative perspective. But the point is, uh, we did not really plan adequately, properly at that time. And there was what we call as mushroom growth of uh, uh, engineering institutions without adequate infrastructure, without adequate teaching faculty, without any mindset of research, without any mindset of quality. Mm -hmm. So I, I fully agree with Dr. Reddy when he says, when teachers are not there of the requisite quality, what sorts of engineers will you produce? Mm -hmm. When there is no mindset to connect with engineering, it's, in, it's engineering education, and you are not connecting with industry, what do you do? So. The country had gone to increasing the number of engineers produced, but unfortunately, more number of unemployable engineers than employable engineers, more number of unqualified or semi-qualified engineers than qualified engineers. So I always call it, uh, if you give higher qualification without quality, it's more of a liability than an asset. So it uh, may look like a little stronger statement, mm -hmm. but we increase the numbers of engineers, but we created more bad number of engineers, if I use the word, mm -hmm. but much less good quality number of engineers, okay. number one. Number two, the relevance of education is very important. You continue with mechanical engineering in the same traditional style, it's important. But this style has to change. The content has to change. These colleges were, many of these colleges were not even fit enough to think how to change, mm -hmm. what to change. And therefore, this committee has not put a blanket ban on engineering number of seats. They say if you want to go into uh, emerging areas, yes, by all means, number one. Number two, uh, the stand which AICT has been taking is, even in the conventional colleges, if you want to increase the number of seats, have you proven your quality? 
if you are accredited a branch of mechanical engineering, you can still increase the number of seats even in mechanical engineering. Mm -hmm. But then you must prove your quality. Uh, I think what we have seen in perspective is we are trying to put a uh, restriction or ban mm -hmm. only where you have neither proven the quality okay. nor proven your intent of uh, uh, going in the right going direction. Going in the right direction, yeah. yeah. Uh, Professor Anand Singh, you know, as, as, as both... Uh, uh, Dr. Reddy and uh, Professor Agarwal uh, are pointing out, uh, you know, overall, if it, generally, if you look at uh, this particular report or the recommendation, it looks like, you know, the capacity utilization uh, or the underutilization of the capacity is uh, the core issue. And this is something which, as Professor Agarwal is saying, that has been piling uh, on for years altogether now. But it is also because of uh, the related larger issues, with uh, the quality of education, with the quality of educators, Industrial linkages keeping pace with the changing times and changing technology as well. All this leads to underutilization of capacity. Wonderfully explained. Uh, yes, uh, I agree to the recommendations given by Mohan Reddy Sahab. Uh, well, the biggest challenge which we as a country we have been facing, if we look at the broad statistics of last ten years, well, uh, we see uh, the quantitative dimensions almost the capacity utilization of approved intake is close to around 50 to 70%. Mm -hmm. And all those who take admission, again, almost 50 to 60% of them are getting optimally employed. Others are either semi-employed or unemployed because most of them, they get jobs in non-engineering sectors as well. So now the prime agenda is manifold. First, if we look at the sharp contrast in comparison to UAE, well, there, there are optimal level of checks and balances at the time of the grant of approval, wherein all the institutions, when they are, when they are applying for a particular program, they are supposed to do a comprehensive empirical research, which we call it as needs analysis, which conducts empirical research with the prospective students who are likely to take admission. That's one. Mm -hmm. They do comparative uh, data analysis of all the institutions what has been the ratio of their intake and the number of applicants? Like if they have an intake of 60 students, how many times the number of applicants are there? Maybe 300 or 400, that's second. Third is in terms of what has been the overall placement percentage? And last but not the least, what is likely to be the prospective admission seekers mm -hmm. if the institution mm -hmm. gets an approval? Okay. But in Indian okay. context, probably, not many regulatory bodies, or I really doubt whether any regulatory body insists on getting a needs analysis. So probably the expansion was very fast considering the economic growth rate. So at that pace, it was, yes, in the initial phases, the growth rate of the economy was at a faster pace. And we had a vision to you know, cater to the economic growth by having large number of highly qualified engineers. Okay. But okay. then probably in the process of economic growth, Probably the pace of capacity utilization of academic programs went far ahead of the economic growth rate. And that ultimately led to suboptimal, you know, capacity utilization in approved intake okay. and also in terms of suboptimal placement scenario, okay. which is a uh, fallout of suboptimal focus on outcome based education. Mm -hmm. Now, UGC and all the regulatory bodies like AICT are insisting on outcome based education to make sure that all the engineers which are passing out, they have the optimal blend of knowledge, skills, and competencies, which is likely to generate optimal level of employability in India and abroad. Okay. But now the focus has increased to a phenomenal extent, but in earlier times, it wasn't there. And I also agree with Mohan Reddy Sahib who said that, yes, we do not have that many number of uh, teachers mm -hmm. highly qualified mm -hmm. to produce world-class engineers. So we need to have an adequate focus on having world-class teachers, especially by having high level of focus on research, innovation, incubation, okay. commercialization, okay. IPRs, and so on and so okay. forth. Okay. So okay. that we get the right blend of teachers who can produce the right blend of engineers who can transform the entire ecosystem of engineering as a professional okay. and take India okay. to newer heights. Not only okay. in so, terms so, of so, so what you're saying, uh, Professor Singh, here is uh, you know, uh, that, that it's, it's, it, it, it needs to be a uh, right blend of all these factors. Uh, Professor Seth, uh, you know, uh, before we move on to uh, the next uh, phase in terms of, you know, of the discussion, in terms of trying, we're trying to identify the issues here. So your views in terms of, you know, vis-a-vis -vis, uh, these all aspects, uh, 
or is there something else which you would want to add uh, uh, when we are looking at the management of technical education in the country and the issues uh, uh, you know uh, with with this particular system or uh, which we are facing uh, be it the underutilization of the capacity or uh, industry linkages or the quality of education uh, uh, the courses and the teachers both yeah so namaskar so the earlier speaker professor reddy and professor uh, rana they already uh, sorry professor agrawal described that lot of engineering college mushroom and under utilization of the capacity because not more than 50% enrollment since last 3 4 years mm -hmm. and it is a right decision by the aict as per the report of the dr mohan reddy but ai city has also taken care of because the infrastructure and all uh, building is already there and such a uh, in uh, country poor country like india uh, it is uh, not a good thing to underutilize and to all such infrastructure uh, to be spared but ai city has taken a decision that any institute uh, if want to start some other courses which is not under the purview of ai city means the life science courses or the under ugc uh, courses so it is a right decision of the icit they have taken care of that infrastructure so with the um, regulatory permission uh, that uh, uh, infrastructure are utilized also the emerging area okay the already uh, professor mohan reddy had said that icit has allowed even in this um, um, uh, ban and moratorium condition okay uh, the if any institute is interested to have this uh, uh, new technological courses like the 3d printing or a uh, cyber security like that type of the uh, courses suggested so either as a minor course or a uh, it is allowed okay and within the limit of uh, the original sanction sets indeed uh, the <clears throat> institutes are allowed to reshuffle indeed the as per the demand of the students let me let me on on that on that note uh, professor shet let me let me go back to uh, you know uh, dr reddy here dr reddy if you could uh, uh, you throw some more light on on the exceptions here which we are talking about vis a vis uh, the moratorium uh, what are the key exceptions uh, where is it that uh, you know your committee is is allowing that uh, Uh, a relaxation on the moratorium that is one part and two uh, we, we have already identified all of you have pointed out two various issues uh, now the question is how to deal with these in the coming uh, you know uh, years uh, and uh, months okay thank you uh, vishal uh, the first one is in terms of exceptions even the 2018 19 report the there is sort of a small exception not in terms of capacity but we said you can repurpose what capacity has already been allocated to you mm -hmm. uh, whatever the authorized uh, capacity was there in the engineering college instead of mechanical engineering they could probably uh, repurpose that saying that they will make it uh, 70% mechanical 30% would be new courses that will come by in digital technologies and so on and so forth okay. to that extent i think there is an extremely gratifying result that has come in what has happened is we suggested this eight new emerging technologies at that point of time in 2018 in our country at the undergraduate level there were only 5000 seats in these eight digital emerging technologies in a country like india there were just 5000 seats fast forward to 2021 because of the intervention that we did now it's at 130000 seats are there okay the total capacity has not increased what has happened is the repurposing the repurposing of the capacity uh, repurposing the capacity that is one thing that is it's an outstanding achievement according to me people are listening people are definitely following what is required for this nation now coming to the latest interim report that's come by the exception that we made the first one is if there are institutions we are already running at a 100% capacity or i think 100% is uh slightly this normal because there are a few challenges it can't be just 100 so i think the number is 80% or above we said that you should be in a position to give them extra capacity and we define the capacity that could be there mm -hmm. the key reason for that is if you look at a, a student enrollment of 100% close to 100% in any education institution that's a very strong lead indicator of the quality of that particular institution 
Okay. Students are much smarter than any one of us in this discussion. I assure you. Indeed. So they know very well which is the best institutes are there in the uh, in engineering. So they go to them. So we said, therefore, these institutes not only enrollment. We have seen thereafter the placement history also is very strong. Wherever there is a hundred percent enrollment that happens, the placement is also close to a hundred percent. So the result is those are the people who have now mastered it in terms of an art, mm -hmm. saying that we can uh, get enough of capacity into our uh, institutions, we can train them well, we can also place them well. Okay. So that's one exception if you hit that number hundred. Okay. The second one is we said we had a monitoring of three years. There could be still very good meaning individuals, philanthropists. There could be some institutions which want to create high uh, uh, quality, high standard education institutions. So we define certain entry barriers to say if they meet these entry barriers, like they should get uh, uh, a uh, NIRF ranking of within the number uh, 100 numbers in the first five years. Okay. Uh, so therefore, what happens is the focus is not any longer on just creating the capacity for those people, but will be more in terms of making sure the quality comes by. Okay. So that is the second exception that we make. Okay. So I'll pop those the two exceptions that are there. One is to say if there's already a capacity of hundred percent, you okay. give more to them. And, 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 in, in, in terms of that. in terms of way ahead, uh, Doctor Reddy, since we are uh, running short of time, if you could uh, you know uh, tell us. Uh, your views and the committee's views of, of uh, tackling all these challenges. Of course, the exceptions do point out the way it needs to be tackled, but on the, on the larger scale. Yes, I, I think what we have done is certainly the digital technologies have started, uh, uh, initiative has happened. I think I have to give a lot of credit to AICT, and especially I like to call out Professor Anil Sahasribute. Personally, it took a lot of interest in making sure that there were a lot of interventions in terms of improving the quality of the teachers. Mm -hmm. They all have going through the QIP programs, quality improvement programs at this point of time. Uh, for the large capacity that we have, large number of teachers that we have, it's not an easy task, but that is certainly happening. The other thing is that, you know, if you want to improve the quality, the other bigger intervention we're talking about okay. is that industry linkages have to improve. The industry has to work very closely with them. Some people have told us saying that, you know, look, we are uh, cooperative societies, trusts, etc. So we can't even have industry members on a board. But I keep saying, no, we don't want to uh, get into the core of your operations. What we want is that in the Western world too, where, you know, the best of the universities, you can name them, I can tell who they are. But the point is that there is something called leadership advisory board. Mm -hmm. You bring the industry into play and you make sure that there is more amount of interaction. Then what happens is the education institutions are going to uh, churn out students who are ready for the industry. Okay. The other one, which is extremely important, is that we are not paying attention to these two words called internships and apprenticeship programs. Mm -hmm. Internships, have, uh, they were there. They were defined in the curriculum. I think there is rigor that is required and the AICT is pushing it very hard at this point of time. Okay. And even equally so in the apprenticeship program. Okay. In, in fact, in some of the institutions now, we can allow a student to go and do one complete semester of internship in an industry. Okay, so so that it is also an important aspect program. there which you're pointing out. I'll, uh, you know, I'm, uh, we, we have uh, a small time left, but let me bring in uh, Professor Singh uh, here first. Professor Singh, your views there on these two important aspects, as Dr. Reddy uh, was explaining. One is industry linkages, uh, bringing more, uh, you know, more of the industry experience uh, on the education side as well. And the, the concept of internship and apprenticeship, something which is, which is really important, that bridge between uh, uh, an engineer an edu who's been educated now and uh, before he uh, you know, officially becomes an engineer or professionally becomes an engineer. Perfect. I think uh, that's a wonderful idea. In fact, uh, what the US has been practicing for a long time in fact, we should have, uh, we should evolve the culture of reciprocal membership on both the boards. The people from the industry being on the academic advisory board of the higher educational and technical institutions, especially the engineering institutions, and faculty members on board with the corporate houses, so that they both are able to understand each other better. Now, the faculty members who are working on the board of the corporate sector, like okay. the US and other leading developed economies are having, they would understand what is the real expectation of the corporate world from the budding talent so that they can help in terms of structuring the upgradation of the curricula on a dynamic basis. Okay. That's one. Second is the internship 
and the project based learning which is internationally a practice probably the culture of medicine in which the students uh, they go for one year of compulsory rotatory internship so probably if we can incorporate that in engineering as well one year or one year would be a really a good time for the student to understand the entire functioning of the engineering all the domains and subdomains so that they really get hands on experience so probably these two things and last but not the least okay. the industry linkages which we talk about industry academia linkages yes certainly it should be made mandatory and they should have quarterly or half yearly meetings so that so as to assess okay. what has been actually planned and discussed and to see what are the gaps between what was planned and what was implemented okay. so that they can be corrective checks and balances to make sure all that which was envisioned collectively by the academicians and people from the industry is implemented to the best possible extent okay. and, and, to churn out the right quality of engineering. And that, that would go a long way indeed uh, bringing the industry experience as well. Professor Agarwal, before we bring this discussion to an end, your quick concluding comments in terms of, you know, uh, the way ahead from here onwards. The uh, challenges have been identified. Yeah. The areas have been identified. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the committee headed by Dr. Reddy has also suggested the way we should move ahead. But in, in terms of adding more to that, and how quickly? Uh, Vishal, I am a hardcore optimist and I see brighter light at the end of the day. See, the spare capacity of an engineering college, supposing now they are allowed to conduct BSc programs, I think these BSc programs will automatically become much more applied when they are conducted in the campus of the engineering college. Mm -hmm. For example, BSc physics, when electronics labs are already there. BSc chemistry, when chemical engineering labs are already there. So the, we will get much better practical orientation to other courses as a byproduct, okay. number one. Number two, in the NEP, we are looking at multidisciplinary institutions. So new disciplines will emerge and the spare capacity will be grabbed, I'll tell you. Okay. For example, tomorrow we may even talk about, uh, I mean, uh, dental colleges will require so much of engineering. Uh, specifically required to them. You might need engineers as cathedral engineers. You mm -hmm. might need engineers which we can't even think of. So once the spare capacity is there, this country is very innovative. I'm sure innovative ideas will come. Indeed. And in a way, I think it's a blessing in disguise that we have created this spare capacity okay. to make the brain think fresh. Okay, wonderful. That the, That is a perfect note uh, to end the discussion on. Thank you so much, uh, Professor uh, uh, K.K. Agarwal, as well as uh, Professor Seth, uh, uh, Professor Rana Singh, and Dr. B.B.R. Mohan Reddy, uh, most of all, uh, joining us and uh, sharing uh, his uh, report and uh, the rationale there as well. Thank you, all of you. There it is, uh, as our experts were pointing out and suggesting, uh, there is a lot which needs to be done when we're talking about technical education. Of course, there are issues in terms of underutilization of capacity or uh, taking up uh, the level of uh, educators and the education, the technical education as well, uh, several notches higher, but uh, industry linkages, uh, internship, apprenticeship, uh, and uh, as uh, one of the panelists, Dr. Agarwa, uh, was pointing out, uh, the way we should uh, you know, use the capacity in innovative ways uh, or look at uh, uh, new courses, keeping pace with the technology. All these aspects are really, really important. We'll come back again with a different topic. Till then, keep watching Sunset Television. Thank you.